I'm uh, Akar. I work uh, at the University of Toronto, and this work is in collaboration with Muhammad Anwar and Ravan Balakrishnan. Uh, Ravan is somewhere in the audience. Okay, so um, multitasking. Now, uh, in 2009, Sync et al. Uh, defined a typical multitasking instance between two tasks like this. Um, the user desires to switch tasks, then performs the task switch, executes the new task, and then switches back to the previous task. Uh, in smartphones, we see this uh, manifesting in the form of app switching. So let's take a look at a user switching back and forth between two apps. The first app, then switches to the second app, type something, goes back to the first app. Does that again and again and just gives up. Uh, yeah. So what what exactly is happening here? Um, now if we look at the micro step that are involved here, starting with the user's desire to switch apps, uh, there are in total 12 of them. Okay, so it's so many that you probably can't even read them on the slide. Um, it's okay, you don't have to read them. Uh, so to perform a simple task switch, the user first invokes the app switcher or the home screen, then performs optional swipes to reach the, iPad, uh, to reach the app icon, then does a quick visual search to locate the icon, then moves uh, the finger towards the icon, uh, selects it, waits for it to open, and then finally gets to perform the new task. Uh, to switch back, all the steps need to be performed again. So effectively, the user is performing these 12 physical or cognitive steps in every single instance when they want to multitask between two apps. And this seems innocuous when you're using it, but the effect of doing this over and over and over again, going back and forth, just adds up, you know, cumulatively. And compare this to the desktop, where we can have windows side by side, and we see them simultaneously and interact with them instantly. So we propose Poros Interfaces, which is a paradigm to support multitasking on small screens. Now, our aim here is to reduce the switching time and effort and free the user to work on tasks rather than switching between tasks. And so we broadly classify three kinds of operations that the user perform uh, when they switch apps. Okay, first is to just view the content in the second app. The user doesn't want to do anything, just view the content. Second is not just view the content, but also interact with that. And third is to transfer some content from the first app to the second app or vice versa. Uh, and so the aim now is to enable these three operations as seamlessly as possible. Um, right now, each of these operations uh, take at least 10 to 12, 10 to 12 steps, um, because just the switching part takes uh, uh, as many number of steps. And porous interfaces reduce that to zero or one steps, right? Uh, so it enables concurrent visibility, it enables single step interaction, and single step content transfer. So let's look at these one by one. Okay, concurrent visibility. Um, if you can't have windows side by side, the simplest solution is just to have them on top of each other. Um, so porous interfaces have overlapped partially transparent windows. Um, now here we see a messaging app on top of a photo gallery app. Um, and the visibility for both layers is okay, but it's not you know, really good. Um, and so we modify this to an overlap where only the useful parts of a window are visible. So you can see now it's much better, the visibility. Um, and uh, what's happening here is that uh, in the messaging app, which had a black background earlier, we remove the background, make it transparent, and just the useful parts, which is the chat bubbles, are available uh, for visibility, and the rest is completely transparent. Okay, so after concurrent visibility, uh, the next step is to enable single step interaction for both these apps. Uh, and to do that, we use different fingers for different windows. So I'm going to play a clip to uh, demonstrate this, and you'll see that the index finger is controlling the messaging app on the top, and the middle finger is 
controlling the photo app. Okay, so the index finger scrolls, and then the middle finger scrolls the bottom app. You can also type in the chat application, and then zoom in using the middle finger in the photo app. Right? So you just saw that we not only support single fin finger interaction on both the windows, but also multi-finger interactions on them, like zooming, as we just saw. OK, so after, uh, yeah. So the third component is uh, single step content transfer. And porous interfaces do this by using finger identified beat gestures. So let me play this clip where a user transfers an image uh, from the photo app to the messaging app. The user selects the image, transfers it using a simple beat gesture. Now we'll see the user transferring tweets to the messaging app. Very simple, just select and beat. OK, so now we've seen how porous interfaces work with two overlaid windows um, and how they reduce those 12 steps that we talked about to zero or one steps. But how does the user get these two windows open in the first place? You know, how do porous interfaces handle window setup. So again, uh, to address window setup, we focus on the scenarios where a user might need to invoke uh, porous windows. And there are three of them. Uh, one is when the user simply wants to open two overlaid apps from the get-go and starts at the home screen. Uh, second is when a single app is already open and the user then wants to open a second app overlaid on top of it. Uh, and third is when the user wants to simply switch to an already open pairing that uh, he or she already earlier opened, but they want to just switch to it. Um, now, in all these scenarios, the user's intention is explicit, uh, that they want to do the switch or they want to open uh, for us apps. But there is a fourth scenario, which is the notification. And here the user gets interrupted and might want to open the interrupting app as an overlay. So in total, we have these four setup scenarios, and we look at these one by one. Um, but before we do that, I just want to describe an important property of our design, which is very relevant here. And we call it fidelity. Now, because the current interaction paradigm for smartphones is so pervasive, we cannot just introduce a new model uh, that is in conflict with the existing interactions and doesn't even care about it. So what we did was we designed the interface so that the current interactions of uh, uh, the current smartphone interactions are not affected in a very disruptive way. And the general idea here is that porous interfaces are invoked only upon middle finger use. And the existing interactions keep working as uh, they are with the thumb or the index finger or the other fingers. And we'll see this in action as well. Um, also, the prototype that we built is on Android, and it's, uh, Android's window management interactions are different from an iPhone. Um, and so some set of interactions that we use are built around the Android interface, but they can easily be ported to other platforms like the iPhone. OK, so let's get back to window setup. Um, the first is, how can a user set up two porous windows from the home screen? Um, so let's uh, see this. So the existing use is preserved. Index finger just opens one single app. Now to open two apps, the user will first select the middle finger and then the index finger. So what the user did here was they selected the first app with the middle finger, and then the system did not immediately open that. It waited for the second one, and then opened the two of them together. OK, now if the user wants to open a second app with an already opened app, uh, for that, we use the window switcher icon, which is already there. Um, we play this again. Um, so you can simply switch using the index finger, standard use. But then when you use the middle finger, 
you select, it opens the overlaid chorus app. Okay, so now the third one is if the user has a particular app pairing that is already open but not on screen and they want to switch to that pairing, how will they do it? Um, again, we use the window switcher, but this time the window switcher is invoked using the middle finger. You see the user invokes the window switcher and they see pairs of apps and they can just select one of them and you have maps and songs open. Right. Okay, and the fourth one is notifications. Now, this is actually one of the most frequent reasons that users switch apps. Um, and a lot of times, the users want to address the notification quickly without switching away from their current app. And this is where porous interfaces can, again, offer a solution. Let me play this. Um, the user is using something like a map app. They get a message. It shows up as a transparent messaging app. They interact with it and then push it away. Keep interacting. Here, the user doesn't want to interact with the messaging app, so it just goes away after three seconds, right? So it's up to the user if they want to interact with it. Uh, uh, then they can start interacting with it and push it away whenever they want to, or they can ignore it and it goes away after three seconds. Now, of course, this might seem invasive uh, in certain situations, you know, and that's why this is something that the user can customize based on what app do they want this behavior for. Okay, so let's talk briefly about how we did this. Uh, we built a prototype which, is, uh, which identifies fingers on a touch screen using optical detectors that are mounted on the finger. Um, of course, finger detection on touch screens is an open problem, and a lot of research and a lot of companies are working hard to bring it into the market. Um, but for now, this setup works really well. Um, for the software, we built a simulated environment within Android that supports porous interactions. And we built a series of custom apps to play around, uh, messaging, photo gallery, maps, music, and so on and so forth. OK, so the, to get user feedback on the interface, we conducted a qualitative user study. It was a one-hour session uh, where participants tried the interface out and played around with it. Um, and we got a lot of positive response in general. Uh, but I'll use some participant quotes here to share the bits that I find interesting. Okay, so for starters, participants really like the beat gesture and the transparent notification. So I can just beat pictures to my friends all day, or I don't want to check the notification, but can't stop myself. Uh, maybe if I see it instantly, I can let it vanish without doing anything. Right, so typical behavior, like uh, the biggest problems are when you try to copy paste stuff or you try to share content between apps and and when you receive notifications. And that's that. those are the two biggest pain points and that's what the participants liked about this, that it was offering a solution. Um, we also got interesting suggestions and questions regarding how apps should behave when this kind of uh, notification appears. So one participant said that if the video automatically pauses when I start replying to the notification, it would be great. So for example, if they are in a video app and they're watching it and they start engaging with the notification, then it should automatically stop. Um, another participant posed a really interesting privacy question, which is, uh, so if I look at the chat notification in the background, um, will it still tell my friend that I read the message? Like, I don't want to tell them immediately every time. Right? This is a problem. If if the messenger shows seen and you don't want uh, them to go, you don't want to tell them that you've seen the message, uh, that's a problem. So we already see that the interface does introduce some conflicts, uh, which can only be overcome if the apps themselves are designed taking the porous interface into account. Um, participants also mentioned scenarios which alluded to desktop style interaction. Um, can't really focus on the TED Talks, but if they keep playing in the background while I'm chatting, it'll be easier. Uh, I can play mindless games while reading news. Maybe I'll read news more that way. So it's just things that we already do on desktop, um, and the users uh, want that from smartphones as well. Um, participants also mentioned scenarios where they need one of the apps as always available. 
so uh, it would make my road trip so much easier if I can play songs without switching away from my navigation map. Um, and we can think of other scenarios where we want an app to be visible all the time. You know, for example, watching live sports. Okay, uh, the participants, of course, commented on the visibility of the apps. Uh, one person mentioned that I want to watch the game and see the tweets, but when the video gets white, it's hard to see the tweets because they are white too. Uh, maybe they can change color. And this is an important concern for porous interfaces. Uh, there are app pairings where this will work really well, and for others, it might not work at all. Um, and in the paper, we do qualify what will work and what might not. Uh, but we also need to investigate intelligent adaptive solutions to this problem. Um, participants discussed fidelity a lot and even suggested some different modes of operation for the smartphone. So uh, one participant said that maybe a uh, porous interface is not always on. Uh, if I unlock the phone with the middle finger, the porous interface is enabled. If I unlock it with any other finger, it's not. So, and this is actually a very good suggestion, I guess. Um, so to end this, let me just play some application scenarios that we coded up. So map to music. Just browse map, play music. Video and Twitter. Read tweets about the game while watching the game. News and messaging. You can select a part of an article and drag and drop to the yeah. and then if you want you click a picture and send it to somebody while chatting do that using the deep question okay so that's it thank you Questions? Hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, Albrecht Schmidt from the University of Stuttgart. I was wondering, looking at those things, if it's really a good idea to clutter the interface even more. Uh, did you look at the cognitive load? So uh, if you had eight people, and I guess you probably had sort of highly educated students who basically are used to high cognitive load. Yeah. Do you think that's a good idea in general, and uh, what do you reckon about a cognitive load this is going to introduce? I think that's, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a question that we need to do another independent study to explore that, but um, on transparency on interface, translucent uh, windows on interfaces has already been explored a lot, on desktops at least. And uh, even there, the conclusion was that if you do it in a way uh, which, uh, which is, let's say, for example, you have an image in the background and you have text on top, that is something that does not clutter uh, the interface too much and probably has a less cognitive load. Right? So you need to, I don't think there is a black and white answer here. You need to figure out uh, ways where we can make this interface work because we cannot solve the uh, small screen issue, right? The screens are going to be small. Um, one other thing I wanted to say about this, uh, let, it, let, let me answer that after uh, offline, I guess. We have time for another one or two, if they're quick, yeah. Hi, Sonia Rümel in BMW Research. I'm interested in if you have any experiences in how well people were in at the connecting a specific finger to a specific app. So how did they remember if it was the middle finger, the index finger to, to control a specific app? And uh, if you have ideas to, uh, as an alternative to this finger switching, like what could people, uh, what would be another solution to switch between the different apps? Okay, um, so actually, uh, I don't know if you noticed the, in the video, um, at the bottom of the, uh, at the bottom of, uh, the phone, there is an icon which shows which app is on top and which app is on bottom, and that's a button. So the users can actually uh, click that button to change the uh, app. So for actually, uh, uh, one of the participants, what they did was they did not use the middle finger at all. 
because their middle finger was really fat. Um, and uh, what they did was they just used the app switcher icon to switch the top app and kept interacting with the index finger. Right? So maybe that's one solution, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah? I have a quick question I want to ask while we switch laptops here. So a lot of the examples you showed had backgrounds that could be pretty clearly removed, right? Like text on a white background or the, the messaging app where you had the chat bubbles. Um, did you find that it works still pretty well if you have two backgrounds that really can't be removed, like a, a game and a video? Yeah, of a, like maps and video. Yeah, I mean, does that, does that get challenging or does no, it still? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a solution for that right now. And I don't think like translucency would be the answer in those situations. Um, but yeah, so apps that allow us white spaces, uh, for example, a chat app, or item, itemized apps like Twitter, they allow a lot of white space and could be easier to work with. Yeah. Certainly we have a lot of apps like that. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's thank our speaker.